I hope you enjoyed this video today. It talks about my thoughts on uh, creation of an inspiration uh, board as an artist. Uh, what happened to me when I created one and why I did it and why now I continue to uh, add to my board because my initial thoughts were one way and then um, as I grew as an artist I changed and um, it has actually helped me grow as an artist. So without further ado, I wanted to get into this, but I wanted to come on, um, you know, face to face to you and tell you um, some of my thoughts right up front. So I hope you enjoy this video. I'm talking about my inspiration board and I wanted to share with you my thoughts because for the longest time, I just didn't see the need in an inspiration board. I created one because I did it for a class and um, they wanted it and I did it and I even got highlighted for my board. But I didn't see what it was about. I didn't I didn't put my heart and soul into it because I didn't understand it. It actually took me a while before I understand what an inspiration or a mood board was for me as an artist. And it wasn't until several years later when I picked the board up and I looked at it and I saw some of the things that were still true in my life that inspired me. And I saw some of the pictures on the board that I thought, wow, I incorporate that into my art and it was only then that I made the connection. And I realized how important understanding what inspires you and how to connect the things that inspire you into your art journey. It was not until it clicked that what I was putting on my inspiration board truly was what got me into my art studio each day. What inspired me down deep. I just did not connect it when I was first doing this board. But think about it. If you were to capture visually who you are, where you came from, where you are right now, and then even where you feel you're headed, wouldn't that be a strong asset in your art to create? What you love, what you loved as a child, what you gravitate to will all affect your art. My path will be completely different from your path. That is why I often say, if you copy other artists, that's okay for a while. But at some point you have to let it go because it's so important to find your style. Your style will grow so much more when you're in the mindset that you're gonna let go of copying other artists. And this means you're gonna have to take risks and you're gonna have to explore, be, get messy because that's how you become you. By staying within this cocoon of other artists' style, while it might work for a bit and feel comfortable, you will become stagnant in finding what really excites you. I've been there. I figured this out when I was looking back at my board and saw who I was, and it was actually different from what the other artists I was trying to emulate because I loved their art. But once I started looking at the things that I loved, the style of my interior decorating in my house, and I have a simple house, but I decorated a certain way. 
even the clothes that I tend to gravitate to. And there's times when I get off on a tangent and buy a trend, but then I always go back to the clothes that I tend to like. I started realizing that these repeated styles were bleeding into my art. And that was only when I opened up and took risks. There is a black and white and a moody theme that I love. There's like hash marks and repeated black marks, but they're not all the same. And circular and thin and thick lines running against each other. I felt I was finally on a path to find out what was authentically me. And that was so exciting. It was such an opening to where I was going. And it was the day that I felt I got started on understanding who I was an artist. And then was the day I grew. Being creative grows from being inspired. To be inspired, you, you have to figure out what inspires you. And if you continue to rely on somebody else's inspiration, you won't find that. So to take the time to allow your soul to understand what inspires you, what fuels your desire to keep you looking inside and, and within yourself as an artist, here's some questions you can ask. What did I love as a child? What excites me now? What excited me then as I grew up? What style decor do I keep liking? Do I listen to my inner voice and ask what it's saying to me? What memories make me the happiest? What artist tools do I seem to grab and use the most? Am I a neat artist or do I love a mess? Do I like nature or do I prefer the indoor scene? Does music make me happier when I paint or do I like a very quiet room when I paint? Pay attention to all this and start migrating more towards what your artistic voice is telling you and hone in on that and start letting that guide you. You will start to become so much more authentically you. Here's some more things to ask yourself. What is it in using palette knives that interests you? If you like palette knives, which artist books do you have on your shelf and which ones do you keep going back to? What intrigues you when you're mixing colors? Do you like the muddy, moody look? Or do you like the way fluid paints flow on the canvas? Do you tend to go to more thick paints or thin paints? What am I seeing that others tend to ignore? Are you painting for you or do you paint for what you think will sell? Are you letting yourself take risk, even if it ruins a canvas? It will not ruin the canvas, but you can always paint over it. But do you indeed take that risk? By now, we've gone through the video of my love-hate relationship with the Inspiration Board. And by now you understand that when I first did it, I did it because it was an assignment. Then I grew to understand what it meant for me as an artist and how it literally changed my art path. So I hope that you consider making some kind of an inspiration board, um, going through the practice of actually collecting the pictures and keeping up a board through your artistic journey would be helpful, but there's many ways you can probably do it. So. Let me know down below in the comments, if you would, if you do some kind of a mood or inspiration board, or let me know if you're going to try it and um, start tracking some of the things that excite you and some of the things that are in your life, things that as a child that you loved, that you know have or will probably follow you in your art journey. So thank you again for watching this video. And let me know that you stop by down below in the comments. I'd, I'd love to hear from you. And I've, I really love becoming friends with some of you. So I appreciate your um, love towards me. And I love you. And thank you so much for joining me.